Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout. You got me, Noah West, designer here at Adafruit. Joining me every week, my brother Pedro. What's up, man? Hi, right, everybody. I'm Pedro West, creative tech here at Adafruit. And every week, we come to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is a show where we combine 3D printing, DIY electronics. Do that, where we make inspirational projects uh, to inspire you folks. So, welcome to the show. <laughs> Pedro? Yeah. Every week, we have a lovely assortment of segments. We That's start right. off with. Start off with clicking on buttons. What are you prototyping? It's when we take a look at some of the behind the scenes of uh, projects. In, proje uh, in process projects. In working projects. WIPs, whips. Watch me whip. Uh, layer by layer. <laughs> so we take a look at some of the CAG techniques that we use in creating the project. OK, we'll do the shop talk. That's when we talk about some of the ongoings and some new stuff going on in the store. That's right. And then we'll end the show off with Q&A. That's right. We got some questions. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in any of the videos below, and we'll answer we will them. answer them in a future episode. OK, let's start off with Woody prototyping. Going to go over to the overhead here. Oh. Here's the overhead. Oh, okay. you like my mics? Yeah. So last week, we were taking a look at the brand new 7-inch um, touch screen from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. It's oh, very yeah. awesome um, multi-touch. You can uh, sense up the 10 finger inputs. Very cool. It took them a while to get. So it's not really portable or anything like that. So uh, using 3D printing, of course. I um, was able to make these cool little brackets that sort of rearrange all of the boards on the back into a more manageable sort of um, layout, layout yeah. instead of having them just all stacked up on top of each other and creating like a pretty fat um, back if you wanted to make an enclosure around it. Okay. So this is the process I got so far. We got all the portholes in there. So this is the frame, right? This is really clever. So instead of sort of working around constraints, you adapt the mounting holes and make it so I can make my own mounting holes. This is really cool. You got a bunch of different standoffs here and everything has a sort of rhyme and reason to where it is. Tell me a little yeah. bit about uh, why you chose to orient the, uh, the parts this way. It's just the way that some of the wires can get to uh, for the connections and okay. then having access to all the ports on the um, on both sides over here. Okay, so you kind of shift it off to the corner there. Yeah. Um, the uh, the actual driver boards remains in the same spot. It's kind of in, this, in the middle, right? It moves it just a little bit around. Okay. Um, so the two main mounts that are being attached to the back of the board here mm -hmm. are these four up here. Okay. And all the rest of the components are stuck on there. There's plenty of room to add more components, like say an amplifier or a speaker, but I think I'm just going to leave it like that, since sure. you do have the outputs on this side okay, if you yeah. want to hook that up. And of course, it's going to be powered. Uh, the, the power is going to be all managed going through the, um, the driver and the Pi through the 1000C power boost. So okay. it'll be able to be recharged. And because uh, there's plenty of room, you can add any type of battery. I think I'm going to start off with a 2500 milliamp lipo. Cylindrical lipo. or the, de the high density one? Uh, the high density one, yeah. Really? The thinner one? Yeah, the thinner one. Okay, yeah, it'll be really nice and thin. Yeah, so it has a little lip around here. I think I'm going to keep that, just like the way that you're able to hold, yeah, it, like able that. To hold it like that. Um, yeah, so how did you nice. mount the frame to it? You, you have these uh, this sort of lip and an edge at the bottom, and that clamps onto yeah, yeah. The, the display, right? So I'll show you this in more detail sure, as uh, we go on there. But yeah, it's a pretty cool little way that this is being held on. Yeah, these no screws. Just, it just clamps on. Yeah. yeah, it just clamps on to the to the part where the to the um, where the metal and this little extra bezel bezel uh, meet. So okay. a very cool little uh, way to add the, the little framing around. There. Okay. Well, we may or may not have these in the shop. Oh, they, they sold out instantly, didn't they? Oh, my God, yeah. But if we do have them in the shop, or if you want to pick up a Raspberry Pi or a 3D printer, this week's coupon code is 3D Scope. 3D Scope, in reference to this week's very awesome update to the telescope yeah, adapter. Yeah, we, we have a layer by layer for it. We'll talk about it in just a minute. Um, yeah, so use uh, get on that coupon code. Yeah, use 3D Scope during checkout to get 10% off. You get uh, free shipping and uh, orders over $200. You get free uh, UPS ground shipping. And any order over 99 bucks, you get a free Proto Proto half-size PCB for a typing board. OK. Well, let's go ahead and jump into this week's layer by layer. Yeah. Almost. Almost there. All right, well, let's take a look at it. This is one, two, three design. Yeah, that's not right. Sorry about that, folks. Here we go. OK. So what I wanted to do is just show you um, a little bit of workaround of what we did. So this was uh, the original adapter that I made for the iPhone 5S. And it's really just like a little cap that goes over the iPhone. And there's some cutouts for um, volume switch and the power switch. And the main thing is that there's this little sort of uh, cup thing that keeps the lens adapter in place. And I measured it out. Uh, I did quite a bit of uh, tolerance, tolerance testing on it. But it seems to work out, even though I printed it 
where the orientation was actually on the bottom here. So if you see me highlight this face, um, there is, that's where the bottom is. And there's also, of course, a cylinder to cut out uh, the center of the eyepiece so you can actually see through it. But uh, this was oriented uh, a little bit differently. So um, I had to uh, do a couple tests, uh, but the tolerance just still came out exactly the same, which I was really surprised at. So usually when you have something that prints up ways and then you print it out this ways, it changes, um, on, it changes you. on you. Um, so um, taking what I did on the iPhone 6 Plus S Ninja Flex, semi flex a case that we did, I took that and I combined the two parts together, basically, went to 3D design. Um, so I'm using shapes to cut everything out. So everything's sort of uh, driven through shapes, not driven through sketches. But there are some sketches in there. Um, but I've uploaded the 123DX file, so you guys can check it out too and optimize it for maybe your phone, maybe a Samsung Galaxy, or, or something else. Um, there is a little bit different a way this works, is there are cutouts and things too, but I actually added this sort of uh, supporting bridge that really keeps the, the adapter really sturdy, so there's little room for shake. And the way that the iPhone is now, instead of being sort of uh, chamfered, it has fillets, like a complete fillet, so there's like a, a really, really round, rounded edge on that. And everything's just two parts that gets combined together. I could have made it where like, I print the two parts separately with zero supports, but uh, I did want to test out um, one piece with supports and see how that works. And uh, orienting it where that top face you're looking at is actually the bottom and the telescope points up, um, that, that orientation came out really well. And it was pretty sturdy, too. So using, one, two, three, or using Simplify 3D, uh, I did the auto-generate thing, and then I just removed uh, Support supports materials. that I didn't want. Like, if you look at the, the holes there. And also, another thing I did was I did recessed ports, uh, or recessed sort of uh, surface for the port holes, so you can get more in there, so you can actually get your fingers in the little switches and things like that. Because it is kind of thick, and it's thick on purpose so that uh, it holds, it's really yeah. sturdy and things. So that's pretty much the project, really. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about actually using the telescope and. Uh, some things that some tips and things are using it, but that's pretty much it. I did upload the 123DX files and the STLs on Thingiverse. I also updated the uh, the guide, so it's all in there. So be sure to check it out if you are interested. We do have the telescope still in stock. It's a $60 telescope, really really nice telescope, and you get some monies off if you want to save some money on the telescope. They call it first scope for a reason because it's like my first telescope. Yeah, Celestron, Celestron rather the company that makes it. Really good company. I like it. Um, yeah. So yeah. that's pretty much Lair Blair. Yeah, I think we're at a quarter moon as uh, we're recording this. So um, get if you get this, yeah, you should get Rive in time uh, for that's a funny. full moon. Yeah. OK. Um, so that's it. Be sure to check that out. I think that we're going to take a look at time lapses of this in a later segment. Or yeah, I guess now? we could do it now. So this is going to be Shop Talk. Um, there it is, Shop Talk. We'll take a look at uh, printing it first on the Maker 2. I want to remind you guys that uh, the Ultimaker 2 is in stock. And we're going to play a video of it running here. So again, I printed it with um, support material. And it's just using regular uh, PLA that we have in the shop. Uh, it takes about an hour to print, um, but it came out really, really well. I did quite a few iterations on it, because um, I originally designed it for NinjaFlex, right? So mm -hmm. that's completely different material. So uh, putting it in PLA was a little bit too tight, so I had to expand it out. Uh, one thing I'd really like to do, though, is remake it in Fusion 360, driven through sketches, so we can come in there and sort of modify some dimensions to make it adjust to your phone. But there's a lot of work involved, because you do, you know, buttons are different. They're not all the same. Yeah. You know, these cameras are also different as well. So a little bit of, of uh, a thing there. Uh, some actual time lapses, though, of the actual moon. It looks phenomenal. Look how huge it looks. This is using the, uh, the IP sets. Um, 75 times magnification. This is, of course, a 300 millimeter uh, focal length on the telescope, so it's really, really big. Um, one thing, though, that I found out was that if you know, reflective telescopes use curved mirrors to bend light and form an image, and by by using that, um, it's actually inverted. So when you look to the left, it's actually to the right. When you go up, it's actually down. So you do have to be very uh, cautious about that, and you have to sort of anticipate your object's trajectory, because it is moving. You're on the Earth, and everything's moving. So Yeah, it may um, not look like it, but it is speeding totally through the yeah. sky. 
The other thing that made this super easy and really, really high quality is the iPhone 6 Plus. And I guess iOS 8 has a time lapse feature, which has dynamic intervals, or at least really, really smooth intervals. Mm -hmm. So um, you're able to get this really smooth time lapse. You just see the moon kind of moving across. Yeah, which they're is doing really some nice. fancy trickery there. I think it's sure. like anything under 10 minutes, they're doing like two frames for every 10 seconds. So it's very fancy stuff that they're doing. So I'm, I'm guessing they're doing like. Um, frame blending too as well to make that super smooth. Well, what's funny is that you brought your uh, the 5D and a 200 telephoto lens that we have as well. Mm -hmm. You sat it right next to me, we were outside, and you know there is light pollution, but we're able to see the moon, which is nice. Yeah. And really, I was able to get a better look at the moon, much more higher quality. A lot more iPhone. faster than I was yeah. able to do all the exposure settings, and then, you know, because the moon's moving, you're oh, always have to readjust. and everything. Yeah. You have to set a remote intervals and things. The iPhone just does it for you. Yeah. Um, Brightness and aperture Not even to mention the weight of oh my you know, a big, heavy yeah. 200 mil. You have to you know mount that onto a giant, heavy head that's mounting on a you know another yeah. giant uh, a lot of weight. tripod, and then yeah, you know hauling all time. this stuff. And, yeah. and then you just come up with a little phone, a yeah. little light um, telescope, and just plop it down. And yeah, expo your exposure setting is just by clicking on the yeah, <laughs> on the image, on and you're it, done. Yeah. But the one thing is that I do want to know is that, well, um, you get one by one aspect ratio. So yeah. it's just a little circle, but it's a, it's good for moons and things like that. So mm -hmm. if you're looking for a wide scape, probably not going to get too good of it. But um, a feature project could include a motorized, motorized thing, uh, sort of, yeah. what do they call them? Where it's, it's uh, a barn, sort of uh, barn door there you um, go. mount thing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is pretty cool. Well, I think it'd be a um, future episode. It might be a future episode, but yeah, check it out. Um, oh, the last thing I want to talk about is the tripod adapter. Without the tripod adapter, you really couldn't get much. It does come with a stand, nice little Lazy Susan type stand, and it moves mm -hmm. up like this and like that. But it is pretty much for a table. Um, so what we did was we took the hardware, we purposed the hardware nuts and bolts from it, and we made a little tripod adapter um, that works with a 501 Manfrotto head quick release yep. plate. So that's really nice. It's really easy to get it off and on. Of course, all um, the files and the um, how-to step-by-step yeah. is in the older video that we made for yeah. this, so you can check that That's out. That's all the same. That hasn't changed. It still works well with it. All I did was change the adapter for the lens. Yeah, so, so that yeah. is all in the learn.adafruit.com. You get the step-by-step. -step. The Thingiverse and all YouTube. It's all linked, everything below. That's pretty much it. It was really, really fun. Um, I'm sure you can get some really nice nebulas and things if you get away mm -hmm. from all the light pollution, but yeah, yeah this is a really good telephone, uh, telephoto lens. Very cool. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be that one. Uh, we do have something really special about the Ultimaker 2. Yeah, so Give me some context this first. whole thing was printed uh, using 1.75 on an Ultimaker. So if a lot of you might know that um, it's specced at taking 3 millimeter filament, which is the thicker filament. Um, we used to sell it in the shop, but we no longer carry some of the printers that used to mm -hmm. um, uh, require that. So what happened was we ran out of 2 point. 8.5 filament, and I'm like, uh, we got to print this thing out. Um, so I changed the filament out, and I got, I got a clog. I actually yeah. got a clog. So Pedro's like, you know what? I'm going to take this opportunity to try out 175. So you gave a couple hours on figuring out no hardware mods. Yeah, that's, and that's which is remarkable crazy. since when I first researched this, a lot of people had to print out a new feeder arm. That's right. Had to uh, use a different uh, Teflon tube to go inside there. I just wanted to see if it worked with no mods at all, just simply changing the diameter yeah, inside mods. of uh, the EEPROM, I think, is yeah. what it's updating. And so that's what's cool about the Ultimaker. You can get a lot of settings right within the LCD screen here. So that's what you did. So walk us through what you have to do on your LCD screen to get 175. Okay, so to start off, we're going to go into the materials and then into settings. And inside here, if you scroll down past the um, presets, you can go inside of customize. Okay. And it's inside of here where you can change the, diam the diameter size of it. So you just scroll down, it's the third one there. And as you can see, you can incrementally up that, date that, depending on what, you know, if you measure your filament, you can fine tune it in there. Next thing you want to do is go into uh, your uh, advanced tab and then heat up your nozzle, of course. Okay. And after that is done, if you're changing out filament, one of the caveats is because you're still using the three millimeter. Um, Teflon tube inside there, it's going to expand to fill okay. that. So when you're um, changing out filament or um, trying to push out the filament, you want to make sure you get that out. So you can see here, if you just keep playing, huh. that ginormous chunk that um, expands because of the heat. So what you want to do is snip that off before you change out the filament or try to extrude out any more. Right on. Okay. So um, you just go into the move material there after you've um, cl uh, clipped that off, and that'll take care of um, uh, a retraction. Okay, cool. So you so can, you can incrementally um, 
um, sort of drive yeah, the, the extruder. Okay. So here, if uh, if you had trouble um, extruding it, you can again um, fine tune that there. Okay. And the way that you, if you pause here right on that, uh, I didn't really do much changes to the ten the tensioner on the back of the the, the feeder uh, motor. Right. Um, maybe I put it in wrong or something, but it is it, it grips onto that one really seven five well, yeah. really well to where you can see the the, the bite marks on yeah. there. So at least you can't. You do have the option to change it. Um, there is a little screw with a nut that I think. Yeah. Uh, when I took it apart, it just it just burst because you know. Yeah, so maybe we, we might have put it back on wrong, but it, it's it's just right for 175. Yeah. yeah, so it's awesome nice and mistake. tight for that. <laughs> okay, here what we're doing is just um, inserting the, the filament here, as you can it's see. Really speedy. When you, speedy when you do, when you do, it, do the yeah. the change, and you just want to make sure that it does extrude. Another thing here that I'm pointing to is you want to make sure that when you put the feeder tube back in, that it that the springs that are down there holding the, yeah. the Teflon tube into place, it goes beyond there, it's nested nice inside of there so the filament doesn't push the tube out. Right, it can also get sort of, not dislodged, but sort of misaligned, so you have to be a yes, little bit it can hit. Yeah, it can hit the, the walls wall. of that because of yeah. the, 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 um, the diameter size of it is different, obviously. Okay. So after that's all good, that's pretty much the only things you have to look out for. Everything else prints fine. Uh, a lot of the prints that we, the test prints that we're doing, and of course, um, uh, this you can see it's the pie uh, framing for this. I was right. just printing this at 80 millimeters a second by okay, that's uh, fast. 150 yeah. travel rate. Wow. And yeah, um, it's Any printed changes? for like 20 hours it plus. Did. We're yeah. printing the giant helmet. Yeah. And it's, projects. It, it's printing like a champ. I can't believe I, that. I can't believe it either. There's it's like no really hardware nice. mods. It was just in software. And so, uh, other than um, changing the speed, how about uh, the multipliers or anything? Did you have to change the diameter? I thought I would, and there was no, nothing in the multiplier for the um, for the extrusion. So okay. the extrusion multiplier is all that just one O. Um, folks, if you nothing use, with the flow. This is for Simplify 3D as a profile. So if you folks want Pedro's profile for Simplify 3D, yeah. just ask for it, and Pedro will send it to you. I guess. Yeah, we'll put it up know. on the. Uh, where do we have it on a uh, GitHub where oh, all the rest right. of the we profiles live? So also, we'll check it out there. on GitHub. That's where we have most of our S3D profiles and even Cura as well. Yeah, of course, this is definitely not going to work with the flexible material, uh, um, the, the 175 anyway, because it's right. just too thin. Yeah, it's a lot of the long buckle. mode. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is a really cool uh, uh, update. I really like that we can now use all the filament that we have here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we have a lot of 175 filament, very invested into that. So uh, it's really good that you can, um, without any hardware mods, that's the big one, was like, I can't believe it. Yeah, and we'll definitely ask the Ultimaker <laughs> guys at Maker Fair next week okay. uh, what their thoughts are on this. Sure, yeah, maybe there's some experimental stuff going on as well. Don't forget, you can get 10% discount code on Ultimakers, which that's is right. definitely the cheapest price on the oh, internet. Yeah. Brand new, you get free shipping, mm -hmm. and of course, um, you're supporting us. That's right. So definitely check that out. I think you also get like some free goodies like from a Proto and some other things. Yeah, definitely get a Proto and Proto, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, well that's the Ultimaker 2. Really good printer. We're loving it. Um, More shop talk stuff yeah. is America that's Fair, it. which oh, we quickly Fair. mentioned. <laughs> we will be there uh, Saturday and Sunday. We're gonna be in the office on Friday, so that's we'll right. take some videos and the stuff. Whole about team, that. The, the team behind it is gonna be me and Pedro, uh, Tony DeCola. Colin Cunningham, Becky Stern, and Lamar and Phil will be there on Saturday and Sun or Sunday. Yep, so it's going to be the whole Adafruit game. We're yeah. going to have our little posse there, roaming around, getting interviews. That's and right. We're there for coverage. Cool footage. We're sponsoring media coverage here. Um, we'll be doing some interviews as well. If you want to come uh, say hi, please do. We'll be on a tight schedule, so we'll be in and out. We'll be running around the place, so <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> uh, and then, um, yeah, I can't wait for it. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the other thing we want to talk about. It is the Halloween Props Contest. Still got a contest in the works. Very awesome. If you switch over to the web browser here, you can take a look at some of the yeah. awesomeness that is associated with this. Okay, give me a second, folks. I will do that. Okay, so the Halloween Props Contest is, of course, still going on. Let's take a look at some of the updates to it. Let me go over to the browser and make sure I can scroll up. So let's take a look. Since then, we have some new entries. There are now 60 entries. There's 49 days left, 21 prizes still. Big update to the prizes. Samsung. Yes, yeah, Samsung stepped in and has <laughs> added a camera. Yeah, for yeah. grand prize for the judges' uh, light up prop, the non weapon prop, and also the first prize, which will three. So quite a bit of chances to win this camera and a 3D printer. Very yeah, awesome, really yeah. Cool. Again, um, go ahead, head on over to their site to get all the contest rules mm -hmm. and a lot submit of cool ones here. your awesome prize.
prop in. Yeah, they don't have to be 3D printed. A lot of them are um, just sort of fabricated with like, uh, you know, everyday objects. Mm -hmm. And yeah, really cool stuff. So be sure to check that out. Get some gear. Um, yeah, and some, yeah. A lot of very awesome new entries in there. So glad we're not judging this one. Yeah, it's, it's going to be hard. Like, be just tough. so many cool things. <laughs> um, yeah, the lightsaber, the lightsaber, Quidditch ball. Oh, my goodness. Um, axes, the Sonic driver. Head on over to Insertable site to yeah. see all the contest okay. entries and vote. OK. If you want to pick up some electronic stuff for your project, and don't forget coupon code 3D Scope. That's right. Get yourself 10% off on all of your electronic paraphernalia. OK. Well. I think next time for Q&A, folks. All right. This is Q&A. This is where we answer YouTube questions. Let's start it off with this question here from Hoodie Ninja. Hoodie Ninja asks, what 3D printer do you have? I'm getting a 3D printer this year, and I want to have a great one with good designs, with a good design. Yeah, so uh, our two favorite ones right now is the Ultimaker 2 and the FlashForge Creator Pro. The Ultimaker 2 is a really good um, more for ABS and PLA. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a heated bed. has a really big bed, so you can get a lot of different parts and yeah, things. It's more of a square bed, so if you need something that's um, as, as opposed to rectangular size, yeah. like the Flash Forge. Yeah, you can make helmets. <laughs> Good to pick that up. Shields. If you're in need of dual extrusion, Ninja Flex, and... Um, a pretty things? big bed, too, as well. High temperature, yeah, because it comes with an enclosure, a hood, and all that stuff, so you can print really good high temperature um, prints on it. Yeah. It's Definitely a, check out the Flash Forge. Yeah, really good price as well. And, and it looks like you left a comment on the Highland Shield episode. So if you're looking for something that's ginormous, get the- Ginormous, jumbo. Jumbo, get the uh, Type, type A, machine. a Machine Series 1. Mm -hmm. Very, very good printer as well. Yeah, so that one's uh, 305 millimeters uh, cubed. So you can print a ginormous shield or uh, helmet on it. Yeah, and Ninja Flex. Five, yeah. Really something. high precision as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pretty cool. So you got three choices there. It just depends on what yeah. you want to make. And if you want to make all that stuff, uh, you got to get all three of them. Uh, unfortunately. unfortunately, yeah. Not there isn't one to rule them all yet. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, great, good, great breakdown and good question. Thank you, Hoodie Ninja. Next one. This one's from Izubi. Izub, I think. What is that mini keyboard called? We get this question every week. Everyone really likes this keyboard. This is the keyboard from. Cano.me. It is the orange one we're talking about. Mm -hmm. It is for the Raspberry Pi. It comes with their kit. Really fun, good. You know, hundred fifty dollar <laughs> keyboard. I mean, yeah, you get a Pi. Yeah, you get a Pi. <laughs> but what you're pay really paying for is the software the OS, that it comes with. Yeah. Um, definitely check it out. Yeah. yeah, I love the team. So, check it out. Really cool uh, keyboard. Again, we'll get it every week. K A N O. It's linked below. Me. Every week we link it below. Okay, this one's from Jake E Sky E. I noticed that there are only 12 inputs allowed on this device. Is there any way to mimic a GameCube controller over a Bluetooth board? I would need two joysticks. Uh, it would need two joysticks and a D-pad and eight buttons. So we just got a multiplexer in the 80-foot shop, so I would recommend checking that out. We'll probably be doing some future projects with that, so stay tuned. But there is a learning guide on there, so you can get all the tech specs and see if that can work for you. But thank you for the question, Jakey. Next one this is from 8BitO. How about the feeling? This is on the DIY Bluetooth gamepad. Um, I really like this one. I, it, was, uh, it was one of those projects where you're having fun with it, and you're like, man, I just want to keep playing. <laughs> you don't want to film it and document it. Yeah, so the um, buttons you made good. was a NinjaFlex for those. Yeah, rubber NinjaFlex buttons hold out really well. They're not slippery, um, so you can really mash them well and not get the, your, your thumbs all hurty. Yeah. And because it's so small, it actually works really well. It's just kind of like having like this. So mm -hmm. I think it feels really good. I meant, uh, you know, left that out of the video because, you know, yeah. whatever. But this is a good question. The Ninja Flex or the Semi Flex ones would work just as well. Yeah, they would. Uh, it'd be a little bit more harder. It'd be a little bit less uh, rubbery and less like gooey more feeling. Yeah, more slippery too. Yep. But yeah, okay. Got them in different colors too, so you can pick up some Ninja Flex if you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next question is from Riley H Dog stopping by. What's up, man? What, uh, do you know what companies will be at Maker Fair? Yeah, totally. If you go to MakerFair.com uh, and go to Meet the Makers, you can see all the individuals and companies that will be there. Uh, we're looking forward to meeting up with Ultimaker, the folks at Ultimaker, the folks at Autodesk, mm -hmm. and many other ones too. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of people there. Yeah, you can so. see all the talks that are uh, and all, all the happen, talks and all the times. All the, all so, the times so you can schedule out. accordingly. But thank you for the question, Riley H. Dog. That is going to be it for the show, for the Q and A. Um, yeah, let's take a look at. Um, <laughs> What was I going to say, the segue? I forget the segue. Anyway, the segue is be sure to check out the full lineup of shows, starting off with wearable electronics. Folks, if you haven't already, follow Becky on Periscope. 
She's doing some awesome live putting circuits together, mm -hmm. um, looking at projects and things. Very, very cool. So check out Periscope. Follow Becky. She has a show every week on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Definitely check it Different out. Different people co-host as it's well. It's the show to watch if you want to incorporate electronics into all your fashion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then shortly after that, or a little bit later after that, in that evening, you can come on the Google Hangouts and show and tell your project with Lamar Phil, myself, Tony DeCola, a couple other people that usually stop by. You can uh, show off your project, show us what you're working on, retro gear, makerspace, a lot of fun. Always fun every week at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Shortly after that is Ask an Engineer with Lamar and Phil. They're also doing a new live stream. It seems like random like every other day. It's mm -hmm. really cool. It comes on. Something, it, it feels like it's coming on like at 10 p.m. all the way throughout to like 11 to 12. <laughs> like, that's the golden hour to like work. So yeah. I think that's really cool. If you want to um, check in and see what Lamar's working on, definitely tune in to yeah. Periscope, man. From the desk of Lady Ada. Yeah, and it's also on YouTube, so you can see the screencast of what she's looking yeah, at. Yeah. So you can see some Eagle CAD, you can see some Arduino code, all the good stuff there. Um, yeah, their show is on every Wednesday at 8 p.m., all open source, Raspberry Pi, Arduino, and much, much more. So full hour of Lamar and Phil on Ask an Engineer every Wednesday. That's going to be the show, folks. Again, be sure to check out the coupon code. That's right. One. Take advantage. 3D scope, ten percent off, and of course, free shipping on orders over two hundred bucks, and exactly. a free promo proto on any order over hundred bucks. Yes, yes. We are sponsored by you guys. We don't take any loans or venture capital. We are all self-funded, so please support us. Yeah. <laughs> Check it out. Okay. Well, we'll that's going to be back. it for the show. We'll be at Maker Fair. We'll be at Maker Fair upcoming week. That's uh, right. I think we have one more show after that. Or actually, no. Well, show after that's going to be all Maker Fair related yeah. stuff. So. Yeah, so be, be, be uh, ready for some Make It Wear stuff. But until then, remember to keep on making. We'll see you guys next week. See yeah. you. Bye, guys. <laughs>